This is ProBlogger. My name's Darren Rouse and I'm the blogger behind ProBlogger.com, a blog, podcast, event, job board, series of ebooks, and soon to be courses all designed to help you as a blogger to grow your blog, the archives of your blog, the traffic of your blog, the community of your blog, and the income around your blog as well. You can learn more about ProBlogger and all that we do at ProBlogger.com. Now, in today's episode, we're continuing our series of blogger stories, where I'm handing the podcast over to you as uh, the listener of this podcast to tell your story and to share some tips of starting and growing your blogs as the community of ProBlogger. And we kicked off this little series three episodes ago now uh, with a DIY blogger. And yesterday, we featured two tech Microsoft bloggers, and today, to do something a little bit different, I want to introduce you to a friend of mine who, back in 2008, started a blog that would document what she was having for dinner every night in the hope that it would help others on a budget to cook affordable, healthy meals for their families as well. It's such a simple idea, but one that this blogger has grown into a blog with millions of readers and a six-figure income. In fact, she hit that level in her second year of blogging. It's become an extremely profitable business. Now, we're sharing these blogger stories in the hope of inspiring some great new blogs to be started in the year ahead. In the second week of January 2018, we're launching a free course on ProBlogger with the goal of equipping as many new bloggers as possible to get started with great foundations for profitable blogs. So if you want to start a blog or a second blog, sign up to be notified of this free course that we're starting in a few weeks' time now at problogger.com forward slash start a blog. And you can find today's show notes with a link to that starter blog course, sign up course, and a full transcript of today's story over at the show notes at problogger.com forward slash podcast forward slash 223, episode 223. Creating great content, finding an audience, building engagement, monetizing your blog. This is ProBlogger. Today's blogger story is from Erin Chase from $5dinners.com. That's number five, numeral five, five $5dinners.com. Now, I've been hearing stories about Erin and the business that she's built for many years now. So when this year I had the opportunity to meet her face-to-face in person for the first time and to start an event with her, um, the Success Incubator event that we ran earlier in the year, I leapt at that opportunity. Erin is a real go-getter who has built a remarkable business. Now, if you talk to her today or if you go and look at $5dinners.com today, you will see something quite special. You know, you see something that doesn't even look like a blog anymore. She's got millions of readers, lots of amazing content. Um, She's been featured in lots of mainstream media um, and she's making a good income from her business as well. In fact, she's got numerous businesses today. But what I love about it is that what she's going to share today is how it all started. And it started so simply as a blog where she shared the dinner she was making uh, each day and the cost of that. And uh, she wouldn't have known when that started where it was going to lead. It started so simply. And uh, today, as I mentioned at the top of the show, it's now um, over a six-figure business. Uh, She hit that level after a year or so of blogging in her second year, and it's quite remarkable. But it all started so simply, and that's what I want to share today. So I'm going to introduce Erin and let her take over the podcast, and I'll come back at the end just to make a few comments about some of the things that she said that I love and give you some further listening and reading as well. You're listening to Pro Blogger. Hey there, my name is Erin Chase, and I am the founder of $5dinners.com, where I share budget-friendly recipes with those who are looking to save money on groceries and make it easier to get dinner on the table. We share all of those tips and tricks and recipes at $5dinners.com. And I started the website back in the summer of 2008 when the gas prices started to jump up here in the US and we were seeing, my husband had a long commute to work at the time and we were seeing our gas um, for our car double and in order to not go into the red, um, I needed to cut back somewhere and so I decided to cut back on our grocery spending and so I took it upon myself, I was not working at the time, 
took it upon myself to spend less of my husband's hard earned Mm -hmm. money. And I couldn't keep my mouth shut about what I was learning about grocery shopping, about the strategy behind grocery shopping, about how like you can mix and match ingredients together to come up with these really great um, budget friendly meals with these ingredients that I've gotten on sale or even sometimes close to free or even free. And so I started sharing about that on my family blog and my sister was like, yeah, no, thanks. I just want to see pictures of the kids. And so I decided to start a second blog or if we had our family blog going, um, which I do not keep up with anymore. And I started $5 dinners as a place to share basically what I was making for dinner that night. Um, and you know, how much I was spending when I was spending at the grocery store, just tips for cooking, um, cooking tutorials, cutting hacks, just, um, slicing green bell peppers, just all kinds of different things that, um, I was learning and thought would be helpful for others to learn about as well. And I started it originally just as a place to share, And it quickly became a business for us. I didn't even know it could be a business when I very first started, Um, but it quickly became one. And I'm thrilled that it has. I've been on this adventure for the past nine plus years of getting to help people, help inspire people, new ideas for dinner and help them get out of the dinner rut, help them make getting dinner on the table easier, whether it's with our meal plans or just our slow cooker recipes or our new instant pot recipes. And it's just been a pleasure and an honor to get to to do that. Um, Looking back to when I very first started the website and what I'm grateful that I started with, I'm grateful that I started with um, a consistent plan. So when I very first started the blog, I would share what we had for dinner every single day, Monday through Friday. And then on Sunday, I would share our meal plan for the coming week. And so it was, it, was, it was a rough plan, but I did it consistently. Whatever we would make for dinner, I would just snap a picture of it with whatever camera I had back then, which wasn't a great one. And then I would just post what we had. I would post sometimes pictures of our shopping receipt, which this is really how much this meat cost. I would put the price of what we had. But I think having that sort of, this is what we're doing, a recipe Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then this sort of roundup meal plan on Sundays. And then I would sometimes sneak in other articles or I would sneak in some tips in with the recipes and things like that. But I think that that was a great, I'm so grateful that I started with that habit of consistency and just having a plan around the content that we were going to be sharing. Um, Because when you're blogging and you're blogging for business or potentially blogging for business, you have to have a consistent plan, not only for the content you're going to share, but then how you're going to share it and how you're going to get eyeballs onto that content, whether that's just eyeballs on your Facebook page and growing your Facebook page or driving traffic through Pinterest, where however you're going to then um, get the word out about your um, content, you have to have a plan for that as well. So having a plan for your content and then having a plan for essentially the market, your content marketing, the marketing of your content. I think in hindsight, that is what I'm super grateful that I had going for me when I very first started out. Uh, Mistakes that we made in the beginning, I think was not putting myself out there personally. I've certainly involved our family over the years, but I think putting ourselves out there more is always the, what do I wish I had done um, answer? Um, What do I wish I'd done differently over the years? I think it would be putting myself out there because people are wanting to connect with you and they're wanting to connect with your story and they're wanting to connect with your experience and your expertise. And so you have to be able to put yourself out there in order to connect with people in that way. We have been blessed and blown away by the things that have happened because of the $5 Dinners website. We have had millions and millions and millions and millions of visitors onto our website over the years, many millions. I don't think we're into the hundred millions yet, but we might be close. Um, Many, many millions over the years. I've had the opportunity to appear on national television numerous times, on national radio numerous times. I've had the pleasure of getting to meet many of our readers in person um, and have some face-to-face time with them, which going from all across the board, I've had these incredible opportunities. I've been able to um, form great relationships with a number of different large food brands and and corporate um, headquarters and their PR teams here in the U.S., and I've learned a ton about my myself and about our family and about you know, how, how we operate with our, our family life and our, in our business and our life, how that all weaves together. And I think, I think, you know, looking back, I think the one, one of the most important 
lessons I didn't realize until well into the journey was that, you know, being an entrepreneur, owning my own small business and and working in this online business space, it's really all about personal development. Like business development, yes, that happens, but it's the personal development that happens that drives the business development. And I think that's a real crucial part of this this blogger journey, this entrepreneurship journey, this online business owner journey, is that personal development that comes along with it. Um, So my number one tip for new bloggers would be consistency. Consistency, consistency. I mentioned that a minute ago with, you know, having the plan for your content, but if you're not consistent with your content, people aren't going to come back to connect with you. They're not going to come back to hear the next part of their story. They're not going to come back to see what other recipe you might be sharing, whatever the story and the content is that you have to share, whatever the lessons that you have to share with people, they're not going to come back. If they're not consistent, they're not going to join your email newsletter. If you only email, they're not going to stick around on your email newsletter. If you only email once every 10, 12 weeks, you've got to be consistent with your content and the marketing of your content. And I think that's the number one thing that I would share with anybody starting on their blogger journey, because I think that in the long run, you'll have the, that'll have the biggest impact, not only on yourself, but on the people that you are reaching through your words and through your content online. So in summary, I would say, put yourself out there, be consistent with your content, work hard to get your content in front of as many people as you can who need to see your content, who want to see your content, who are excited about the new content that you have, that you'll bring out again in the future. And just keep at it, keep at it, keep at it, work at it, work at it, work at it, set up routines, set up systems, set up processes to help make it easier for you. And as as it grows from from a hobby to to a maybe a, a business, a large business, a, a business with a team, just be consistent with all the things that you're working on and all of the the great content that you're producing for those who are there to you know absorb and consume it and and have that um, allow you to make that difference in their lives. Creating great content and building your audience. This is Pro Blogger. That was Aaron Chase from Five Dollar Dinners. Thanks so much, Aaron, for sharing your story and those tips. I love that she started out just wanting to share what she was learning. Um, it's similar to Sumit's story uh, in yesterday's episode. Erin uh, had a knowledge. She had this new exciting thing in her life. She was learning how to cook dinner and provide dinner for her family in a more affordable way. And um, that was something that she just wanted to share. And uh, so many people tell me that they don't have any expertise or that they don't know what to write about. They've got nothing that they are worth sharing. But uh, this is just a brilliant example, I think, that um, there are things in our lives that happen all the time that we get excited about. And maybe one of those things, those those things that's giving you a bit of energy, so one of those things that you can't help but talk to your friends about, that maybe some of them are going, oh, I don't really want to hear about that. Maybe that type of thing is actually something that other people do want to hear about. And uh, if there's something exciting in your life at the moment, maybe that could be that little thing that could be the beginning of uh, something new, a new blog in some ways. And uh, uh, who who would have ever thought that simply saying, this is what we're having for dinner and this is how much it costs would have turned into what it has today. I've heard that story so many times over people starting blogs just because they wanted to share something that they were learning. It's why I started Pro Blogger. It's why I started Digital Photography School. Um, They were places for me just to record what I was learning and and, in the hope that other people would join in in those ways. Love the tip there of starting with, with a consistent plan, the same plan each week. I don't know if you picked up, she said, Every weekday, she shared the dinners she was having um, and how much they cost. The weekend was a roundup post. And this is a really simple format. Um, Now, your format might be the same type of thing. You might do um, weekdays, one type of post, and weekends, another type of post. Or you might mix it up even more. Back in episode 12, I suggested a different kind of format. So Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, Fridays, Saturday might all be different types of posts. You might write a review one day, an opinion piece another day a link post another day. Um, Back in episode 12, I give you a kind of a sample format for what you might do in a week. So if you're struggling to find your groove with an editorial calendar, as you're starting out, you might want to listen to episode 12. I also really resonated with that um, mistake that uh, Erin talked about, not putting herself 
into the blog early. Again, I've seen this a number of times um, in Vanessa, my wife's blog. Uh, she really resisted putting her face on it, putting her name on it. It was almost an anonymous blog in the early days, but it really came alive when she um, posted a selfie one day and injected herself into it. People do want to have that personal connection with you. It does help to grow your blog. There is probably a time and a place for anonymous blogging as well. We've had a podcast on that, which I'll link in the show notes. But uh, certainly, if you can inject your personality, yourself into it, uh, it really can bring things alive. And if you go and have a look at Erin's site, now you will see she's everywhere. There's videos of her all over the place. And a lot of the content she delivers today, she's sharing the recipes, but it's in video um, and uh, you know, injecting her personality into it. Uh, that lesson she shared about being an entrepreneur is really about um, personal development. If you want to grow um, your development as a business, you need to develop yourself. So such a great lesson there. It reminded me a little bit of my own journey in terms of realizing that my, my physical health is connected to the health of my business. I talked about that back in episode 38, but certainly um, you know, developing your skills in um, leadership, in communication, all of these sort of personal development type skills do flow on and impact the growth of your business as well. So there's so much good stuff in there. And of course, that theme that you will be hearing from a lot of the, the blog that we're featuring this week, consistency is just so important. Uh, consistency, it's those little things that we do every day that add up to the big things. So if you're starting a blog and if you're thinking about starting a blog, I hope that there's been some goodness in there. If you're already a blogger, I, I'm sure you got some good stuff out of that as well. And uh, I really look forward to connecting with you tomorrow because tomorrow I've got another blogger for you. Uh, and tomorrow's blog is a finance blogger. So we've gone through DIY, we've talked tech blogs, we've talked recipe blogs, and tomorrow we're getting into finance bloggers. So uh, there's something for everyone in this series. I do hope that you are enjoying it. Remember, if you are thinking about starting a blog, head over to problogger.com forward slash start a blog blog. And if you want to grab the transcript from today and any of the links that we mentioned, you can head over to the show notes from today at problogger.com forward slash podcast forward slash two, two, three. Thanks for listening. Chat with you tomorrow. You've been listening to Pro Blogger. If you'd like to comment on any of today's topics or subscribe to the series, find us at problogger.com forward slash podcast. Tweet us at problogger. Find us at facebook.com forward slash problogger or search problogger on iTunes. This episode of the Problogger podcast was edited by the team at Podcast Motor, who offer a great range of services, including helping you to set up and launch your podcast, as well as ongoing editing and production of the podcast that you produce. You can check them out at podcastmotor.com.